Everyone, toss a thumbs up. Let me know if you can hear me. Yes, Leon, being muted. It appears you've muted yourself. Jason, it's possible. I don't know if that's what I did or not, but I had to change it. I think I had, there was a, a setting. We've got two mics. Uh, we got two mics working. All right, now let's make sure they can hear you. Hey, everyone. Yes. See, look at this. We got like this two mic dual setup in here, okay? Right? I'm, I'm used to doing this in the COVID era. It's just me. You know what I mean? <laughs> not used to having this dual mic setup here. So, all right. So we'll start from the beginning since nobody heard shit that I said before. All right, what's up, everybody? Happy Monday. As you can see, we're here in person. Okay, there's an echo. All right, that's fine. I think I can, I think I can fix the echo. That, to me, feels solvable. Um, so let me just turn, I'm gonna turn down the gains a little bit. Um, and then let me know if, there is, if the echo is like really, really bad and we can just talk more like this and you can tell me. Okay, so um, we're gonna talk LinkedIn today. We're gonna talk to in uh, hearing her also. That's okay. I think that that should be okay. You can hear her. You can hear us. Again, it's live television, LinkedIn television of some sort. So let me know if, the, if there is an echo. It sounds like everyone seems good to go. I hope we're good to go. Um, but we're going to talk LinkedIn. This happens. It's technical difficulties. Okay. McKinsey joined us two months ago. None of you heard this. This is McKinsey and I literally met for the first time 12 minutes ago. So it's like, meeting for the first time to like you know just doing like an interview together why not right you're here why not you're hanging out in austin for the first time so i have to now i feel like now i have to give you like all the austin recommendations i've got to make sure that you're you know taken care of all right so anyway keep dropping your questions for linkedin again we're going to be talking about 2021 linkedin strategy no echo no echo okay good all right i'm feeling much better now okay Mackenzie, you're talking to our clients every single day. You're talking to salespeople, you're talking to marketing people, and you're talking to executives. What would you say for sales teams? Let's focus on sales teams. What do you feel is the number one mistake that sales teams, or not maybe not mistake, what are the, what's the thing that you feel like sales teams are struggling with the most when it comes to LinkedIn? Because they're all on LinkedIn. Every sales rep, 99% of sales reps are on LinkedIn, right? Okay. Um, Jason's still hearing an echo. All right, well, Jason, I don't know, man. We're gonna do our best here, okay? So what do you feel is the biggest thing sales teams struggle with? What's the struggle point? I mean, the question that I've gotten asked a few times is how do I maximize my time spent on LinkedIn? So they know, you know, their uh, leaders or their um, bosses are asking them to be on LinkedIn. They're asking them to be engaged on the platform, but they aren't always seeing an immediate return on investment. They're like, I spent six hours on LinkedIn today, but you know, I, I don't know what I have to show for it. And, and how do I prioritize my activities so that I'm having the biggest impact in that amount of time? Yeah. Well, so I'm trying to like, I've got like a plan here. This is my plan. My plan is like, I'll turn you down when I talk and then like that should eliminate like all the echo. So, prioritizing time. What do you feel it is people struggle with? Is it that, cause you're right. There's a million things you could do on LinkedIn, right? I could comment on someone's post. I could like, I could connect, I could write a post. I could share my company. There's probably like 72 different things I could do. So what do you feel like whenever people say I struggle to prioritize, like what is it that they struggle with from a prioritization standpoint? I think you're right. I think that there's so many different activities you could be doing. And it's also, you know, we all spend time on social media. We know that it can uh, be distracting, right? You get on there and you are scrolling through your feed rather than intentionally going and carrying out activities. So, you know, I, I think that having a clear framework or strategy for what it is I want to accomplish in my time today is really important. Um, and, you know, working with the teams to feel confident about how they're spending their time. And so do you see, like when you think about this in particular, when you see these teams, is it that they they don't have a structure for their day or like how to incorporate it in their day to day? And so they get lost. You know, I think what, what we've seen and just from my conversations with like top performers, and I'd love to hear like how many of you out there, like feel free to drop, you know, your, you know, how what you do. But what I would say is what I see is most top performers, most people that are using LinkedIn and setting multiple meetings a day or a week, they, it is like a, a habit to them. It's like 8 a.m. They log in. They either they, maybe they look at a hashtag or they go to their LinkedIn sales nav list. Um, 
other than like a habit, right? Which is like every morning, like it's just a part of my DNA. Are there other tips or things that you've seen from people that have made them more or less successful? Yeah. I mean, I think that it doesn't even resonate for people sometimes that they could be creating content and speaking directly to individual people, right? Like they are thinking about, okay, how do I you know, come up with this brilliant idea that I can post about and uh, talk with someone about, right? That, and it doesn't occur to people, I think, that you can take a conversation from your day and really just document what it is that question you got from a client um, and speak directly to that person, but obscure it enough that, you know, it's not clear you're talking about company X, right? But do write it in a way that you're talking directly to that customer or client through your posts. And it's a pretty cool, powerful way to connect with an individual because, you know, they probably will look at it and say, hey, that's exactly what we talked about today. Like, and then follow up with a text message or a LinkedIn message or something like that to be like, I saw your post. Like, that's what we talked about. Right. And all of a sudden you're like bringing people to you um, by creating content on the platform. I think that that's something that just doesn't occur to a lot of people and it's so powerful. Yeah, I think that idea of creating content for one person is probably the most underutilized strategy on LinkedIn. I think the number one, and Brian um, jumped in here, Brian Barron, what's up, Brian? Um, Brian's always in the mix. Brian's in the mix on LinkedIn. Brian text messages me as well too. Like Brian is all over it. Brian sucks my brain dry for like all the free information. So what's up, Brian? Um, the, the reason I'm calling out Brian's question, if all of you can't see it on here, his question is, I haven't adopted LinkedIn stories yet. And so what, what McKinsey and I are talking about is doing content for individuals. I feel like LinkedIn stories is the easiest way to do that. So imagine, you know, I think, I think what makes a lot of people nervous about doing the one-to-one -one content is putting it in the feed. There's something about like, I put it in the feed that I don't know, like they've over trumped up what that actually means. But man, I mean, just imagine. So like, let's say Brian is a target account, right? Let's say Brian is someone that I'm trying to get in front of. And I do a video or Brian and I have a meeting. And then I say, hey, um, look, if you are a director of industrial operations, here are the my top two trends for the rest of this year. One, it's audit season. You need to do this. Two, it's this. Really enjoyed my conversation with Brian. I hope that helps all my operations leaders out there. Tag Brian in it. I'm telling you, dude, nobody is doing this. Nobody is doing this. Like, so Brian, to me, LinkedIn stories is, um, I think, one of the most underutilized features, especially for this like one-to-one -one comms. Another play, one of our reps, um, different company, um, has done is yeah, he'll, he'll do what you were mentioning where he will go and, um, have a meeting with someone. And then again, he'll just talk about the pain point, you know, like you said, so he'll just go and say, had an amazing conversation with other operations leaders. Here are the top two trends I see. Then you don't even have to tag him in the post. You can tag him in the comments, right? So maybe that makes you, uh, then you're adding value. Like, you know, Connor said here, right. Um, you know, ask what you can do for your network. You're just giving value, right? And then you could tag them in it like, hey, I enjoyed our conversation today, Lisa. What that also does is gives you social proof. I think what a lot of people don't realize is if I am another director of operations at Honeywell and you reach out on LinkedIn or maybe you, you direct me to look at your page and I see that you're tagging all of my peers, immediately I'm like, who is this person? So I just feel like there's so many different ways, again, like that one-to-one -one post it doesn't necessarily have to be specifically one to one, but you know, in Adam's case, I think he said he closed two deals in two weeks from companies that he did that with, just because he built like relationship capital. So, if you have, you're hearing it here first. I really feel like nobody's talking about this. The hidden gem one to one posts on LinkedIn, 2020 trends. You heard it here first. Mackenzie brought it up first. One to one is the new play. Yeah, absolutely. All right, one to one is the new play. Okay, all right, I like it. What else? What else do you think is, you know, most mission critical when people are building a strategy around LinkedIn, maybe not on the posting front, but maybe like on the interaction front? 
Yeah, and that's another huge opportunity that I think people um, overlook is that there are so many ways to kind of to connect with individuals who are either, you know, maybe they're sharing an article that they care about or feel passionate about. And, you know, th maybe they're getting a few likes, maybe they're not. Um, but how do you go and show them? I, I feel like when people post something, someone else posts something on LinkedIn, what they're doing is saying, I want to feel seen or heard, right? So how do you help that person feel seen and heard. Well, go like their posts, go comment on it, go engage with it in some way. Or, I mean, you know, send them a text message. It, it can, that relationship can like happen off of the platform as well. Um, but just helping and, and you know, in reassuring people that they're being seen and heard they're sharing content is another really important component of this. Yeah. What I like about that is, is I think one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is if you go and look at the average executive, they get no comments none like the average person on linkedin who's you know not in the sales and marketing you know world gets like no interactions and when they do it's only their employees and so that's that to me is i think one of the other most important kind of plays here to think about is you know i call it the slow play which is in linkedin sales navigator i can um build out a list of people and then if you save that search in your lead, in your homepage, you can just say lead shares and every morning you just log in and see who posted. And I think what you're gonna be shocked is you're gonna see most people get no comments. And to your point of making people feel seen and heard, if I'm a executive you know, or even director or manager and I put out a piece of content and then two weeks later and you're the person who comments twice, I'm gonna remember you. Like there's a 100% chance I'm gonna remember you. Like I remember for me, and I mean, look, and I, you know, I get a lot of comments in certain posts, others not so much, but in the ones, if you comment three, four, five times, I totally know what your name is. Like I, I might not know what, all right, one more time. We're gonna try it one more time. So the Wi-Fi is kind of working. So we'll see how it keeps going. We're on a roll too. I feel like we are talking about like really good stuff. We, we got a couple of tidbits out there. We got lots of tidbits out there. All right. So we were, what were we just talking about? What were we on? What topic were we on? Uh, I mean, we were talking about commenting and engaging on, on other people's posts. Uh, you know, I think right. that, yeah, like I think the thing is that everybody knows how to use LinkedIn as a database, right? Like that's what people have been using this platform for from its inception, but figuring out how to take it to that next level, right? Like how do I now go use it as a platform to engage with people and to actually drive business outcomes, right? That's the evolution that's taking place. And I think that, you know, you can be an early adopter, you can be at the forefront of that, or you can wait till everybody else figures it out and then, uh, and then jump on the bandwagon. Do you just feel like certain people? So what I feel like is this whole concept of people should be building audience or interacting is not foreign, right? Like this is not a foreign concept. It also is not foreign that there are people that are generating a lot of outcomes from this, right? Why is it purely just nerves? Is it purely just people are nervous that, man, if I post this, I'm going to look stupid. If I post this, nobody's going to like it. Like, do you feel like that, that's, you know, the main reason, like, is that the main culprit? I mean, we have, when you think about what the alternative is, right, which is maybe like going and speaking at a conference or even just attending a conference, I think historically, a lot of people have not been invited to be speakers. They're not comfortable or, or you know, haven't been told uh, by external people that their ideas are valuable and that they have something to contribute to the larger professional community. And all of a sudden, everyone can start contributing. And, and, you know, we've seen this on other platforms and in social situations and people adopt it and all of a sudden, hey, it's no big deal to post a Facebook update about me going on vacation, but that wasn't normal before either, right? So uh, yeah, I think it's people are, haven't been told that their ideas contribute to this larger professional um, community and they aren't confident doing it, right? Yeah, and I, th and I think the other piece is even when people are somewhat in the know or they're confident, um, right now, if you look at LinkedIn, it's a lot of advice for salespeople, right? And a lot of advice for sale sales primarily, obviously, because salespeople are on LinkedIn all day and they're like, I got to be on this 
platform all day. So I might as well like look at some content. Right. And I think, I think the gap that I see it, of why, and I think in 2021, what I think a lot of people are going to start to figure out is they are going to opt out of wanting to be popular and the likes. Look, I sell in sales leaders and CEOs are our target market. Okay. And marketing leaders. Okay. So guess what we talk about? Sales, leadership, marketing. If for some reason we pivot scaled. So McKinsey, if we pivot scaled and we start selling uh, tractors, we are never going to talk to sales and marketing people again. Okay. We're only going to talk to people that use tractors, right? And we sell industrial tractors. So we're, tra we're going we're gonna to go and target industrial farmers. Okay. That's scaled 2.0. What I feel like the biggest issue is that when other salespeople see other salespeople on LinkedIn, they don't realize that a lot of those salespeople or those talking heads, right? The talking heads and salespeople are selling to salespeople and marketing people. And so you can choose to pander to get more likes, even though it's not relevant at all to your target audience, right? If you sell the HR or if you sell tractors, or you can choose to get less likes and less engagement, but get interaction from the right person or right people. So how would you encourage people to, to, to balance that? How would you encourage people who are like, yeah, Jake, but when I put up a video or Jake, when I put up a post, I don't get as much traction or likes on it. I mean, the I feel like, you know, if someone is posting something that is maybe relevant to their uh, target audience, a lot of times it's too overly focused on their company. Like it's promotion. Like I, I feel like the, uh, the like inroads to getting into posting on LinkedIn is like sharing your company content, right? Individuals start sharing their company content and they're like, oh, I can do a post. And, and then they do another post that's about their own company content, right? And when they go and they do uh, like emails to their, their prospects, they don't just talk all day about their product. They ask what's going on and they talk about- Well, a lot of people do. A lot of people do just talk about their product, which is, which is half the problem with why emails. That's why emails, that's why emails are getting so smoked right now. Why, why people are having such trouble with email right now is they are, they're just hitting send all and then they're applying the same strategy to their LinkedIn DMs. Out to the listeners today and assume that they're all uh, the awesome salespeople who know how to um, engage with their prospects and understand what their uh, problems are rather than just talking about me, 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 me. Uh, but when you go look at someone's newsfeed and it's like, my product, my product, my product, my product, why would I ever want to talk to you? All you're going to talk to me about is your product. Whereas if you're sharing industry insights that are relevant to me that aren't necessarily all about your product, I'm like, oh, this person has interesting thoughts to contribute to a larger conversation, right? Um, and, and so I, I think that that's one thing is like if, you know, assuming that someone is starting to post, they're just not realizing that this is an opportunity to share thought leadership and actually help people or add value. They're just like, this is what my cool product can do. And even if they're saying my product can help you in this way, it's like, that's not the same as just, uh, you know, kind of altruistically sharing the things that you're learning throughout the course of your career. Right. Yeah. And I think, look, it's not, you don't even have to be altruistic. Right. I think it, it's a little bit, it's a mix meaning, you know, again, when you guys speak at a conference, you know, there's different conferences that you might speak at one where it might be all about value and it's elevating your own you know, personal reputation in an industry and in another conference where it might be more about, you know, trying to get customers and Connor's, you know, brought this up. Instant gratification isn't the game. Don't be a billboard. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, Glenn brought this up and I'm going to call it out because I look, although it's a little, a uh, little funny, you know, digital engagements, how many digital engagements end in digital marriages, right? Which, which I actually think, although it, it's, you know, it's a play, I, I think it's a really important concept. And that's kind of what I think what Connor's talking about when he says, you know, playing the long game, you know, so how do you, how do you do that? Because I think a lot of sales teams and marketing teams are so hardwired to be like, now, now, like did this, I did this activity, did this, did this equal an outcome now? Or is, you know, how, how do I balance that? Or how do I talk to my manager about like, Hey, I'm playing the long game here. I'm not just, you know, playing a short game. So how do people, um, balance those two things. FYI, you have to refresh LinkedIn. This is just a thing. It doesn't mean it's frozen. So, so how do you balance that? Instant gratification versus tomorrow gratification for LinkedIn in particular. I think that that's actually another reason, right, Jake, why uh, people aren't 
you know, they maybe go do a couple posts and they're like, oh, I didn't make 15 sales today. So I, you know, I give up <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, recognizing that this is a, an investment that's going to take several months because, you know, you need to get to a point where people uh, are coming or looking to you for good information, right? Like, it's not like, uh, Jake, when you started posting on LinkedIn that you had hundreds of people commenting on your stuff and being like, oh, Jake is brilliant, right? Um, it takes time to build that reputation and build that community. Um, so, I mean, as far as talking to your manager or boss, like, it, it is a tension, right? Like, it's challenging because it's it goes back to that wasting time on LinkedIn thing. It's like, if you can't show results today, like, well, what did you do for four hours today, right? Like, why, why did you spend four hours and don't have results to show for it? So I think that, you know, people are fortunate when they have uh, managers who understand or appreciate that some of these things are longer term um, plays that can yield uh, really significant benefits. But, you know, when you, you also, the thing that blows my mind is we used to go speak at conferences and invest a ton of money to do this, right? It was like, we're not guaranteed to lead when you go to a conference either, right? Yeah, but you'll absolutely. spend $8,000 for room and flights. And I mean, more maybe if you're sending multiple people um, and they, they people saw the value of that because they're like, well, but you're talking to someone face to face and this is the exact same thing, but you just get to reach a lot more people. Um, so I don't know if I have a secret for how to convince your boss that your time spent is worthwhile. Um, but I think that, you know, maybe starting to draw some of those parallels between, um, you know, hey, my, my face and name is recognized in this industry now and I can go talk to more people because of that. Yeah. And I think, I mean, look, I've had people reach out where their boss has been a little scared. Their boss is like, oh my gosh, look at Timmy. Timmy's becoming a celebrity in this like world or space. And so I just, I feel like, you know, in 20, we've already been heading down this, right? We've already been changing, but I feel like coming into this new year, every company has to have a LinkedIn strategy and just realize like, you know, to your point, McKinsey, that look, trade shows, friends, they're not coming back. You're also not going face to face to meet anybody for a while, right? You'll have a little smattering here or there, but it's not gonna be close. And so the real question is like, what's your other option? Like, like genuinely, if your audience is on LinkedIn, if you're buyers or influencers, you can't meet with them face-to-face. -face. You can't meet with them at a trade show. They are active on LinkedIn and you can see that. What is your other option? This is, this is the, the argument that I don't understand. So instead we've got, you know, let's say you've got a big sales team. You've got 100, 200 people engaging on LinkedIn. It's in their sequences every day with no strategy. You have no idea the messages. You have no idea the comments and likes are sending. You have no idea what they're doing. And, and how, so, you know, how can you empower them? Because I feel like that's, that's it too, is that, so because of that, I think so many people, the, then the default is, is not to empower people. The default is to control people and to say, hey, if I can't track it, then maybe it's not valuable or to, um, you know, say, hey, only share this type of content, which means that you're again, you're losing all the value. So let's say because you work with marketing departments and marketing leaders, too. What do you see marketing leaders doing or sales teams and working with marketing do to empower this type of, of sharing and engagement, too? Yeah. And that's, you know, sharing your company's content is just not like we talked about. It's not the way to get people to be like, oh, this is an interesting person who has good thoughts to contribute to a conversation. Right. So I think that when when, um, you know, supervisors or bosses are encouraging people to talk about what interests them. And I think that that's a little counterintuitive. Sometimes they're like, this isn't and I'm not saying like, you know, go post the same things you would post on Instagram or Facebook or something, but like, if you want to post it, like if you want to post, I mean, here's what I tell all of our people. I don't care what you post about. If you want to post about scaled or sales, that's great. But like, if you want to be known as the yoga vegan, uh, whatever, amazing, go do it. Right. Because here's my point. People like keeping people down, isn't going to work either, you know? And so I think too many people are, um, overly focused on it. Yeah. And it, yeah, exactly. It's just like, if you can't show personality and show the things that you're actually interested in and actually doing at a particular time, like you're not being authentic and you're not like, right. You're, you're 
focusing on documenting what your process is, right? Or uh, documenting what it is that you're learning or doing, not necessarily creating content. I think that's probably a, a big barrier too. People are like, I have to come up with this brilliant idea to share where it's like, no, just like, what did you do today? Like, tell me about what you did today, right? What was an interesting, th what was a question someone asked you today? Like, how can you not just answer that question for one individual, but answer it for your entire community? Like, who else would this help if they saw this information, right? So, um, I mean, the easiest way is just to tell people that, hey, we've got your back. Like, post about what is exciting, like, post about what's exciting to you, post about what you're interested in, um, and, you know, build that community and not make people feel like they have to be worried about, their boss being like, why would you ever post that vegan food picture on LinkedIn? I mean, for me, it's like, look, you control, I think what a lot of people too, like this is for my sellers and marketers, you're building a career. You, you know, where you're at today is a pit stop in your career. The reputation that you build can last for forever. And I feel like too many people are not thinking about this shorts. They're, if, if I was a brand, Brand new rep today, and I believed in what we're talking about, which uh, hopefully you do to some extent. Or why are you tuned in? Right at this point, you'd have been like, "This is bullshit." The brand these people are talking about, and again, like I talk about this a lot. To me, it's more about reputation than it is about brand. Okay, that it's about how do you build a digital reputation. For me, I think about man. If I had LinkedIn when I started selling, I would man what my network would look like. I just I can't even fathom. I mean, my network's already decent. You know, but if I, if I would have really picked up on this early in my career, just how big it would have been, um, I, I just think is ridiculous. So I think for a lot of people, like if you have a boss, so if you have a boss that you're struggling to get on board with some of this, to me, you don't need your boss to be involved. You don't. To McKinsey's point, you're out having conversations with buyers every day. Go and highlight those conversations. Highlight what you're hearing. One. Two, just do it at 8 a.m., Post at 8 a.m., engage when you want, then do your day job. Like to me, this is too important for many of people on the front lines to wait, to continue to wait, um, to see like what's going to happen or play out. Um, so again, I would not, you know, again, Connor said you're already a dinosaur. COVID is the meteorite that struck. It's very powerful, Connor. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Give Connor a big thumbs up there. Give him a little clap. Um, you know, you know, it's interesting though. I mean, well, I do feel like LinkedIn needs a little bit more discourse though. I do feel like LinkedIn is quite a bit of like play it super, super safe and play it like, I don't know. And, and not like negative, but I mean, right now, again, it's like people complain that everybody, oh, the, who are these people that post, but then nobody calls these people out. Every other social platform, if you post and you suck. People are gonna let you know you suck. You know what I mean? If you are a, if you are a fake, people on, on every other social platform, YouTube, Instagram, every other platform are gonna be like, dude, you suck. But LinkedIn right now, too many people I think are not, or are overly worried um, about that too. I, I believe that like, I believe it's really important that we have more dialogue and that I think that'll mature LinkedIn too. Right? I think it, what it does is it eliminates people who are posting to pander. If you're pander and you're so paper soft that someone disagrees with you and then you're like, then you're crying, you know, you're bitching about it for, I can't tell you how many influence I've heard complain about negative comments that someone said. I'm like, you're putting stuff online. If people aren't saying something negative, then I'd argue you're being too vanilla. And I feel like LinkedIn needs a little, a little bit more of this. I don't know how that, that plays into this, but I'd, I'd like to get your take on it. Well, there's more accountability on LinkedIn than any other platform, right? And in some ways it's good because, you know, you don't have, people are tied to a company almost always. Um, and so there's just this heightened accountability. It's you're not, even if you're not representing your company with your post, you know, you're still showing up and representing your company in some ways. And I think that that lends itself to a more, um, like a better social media platform in a lot of ways, right? Because unlike Twitter or Instagram, where people are just like, you know, trolling and running around saying like crazy, just hurtful, like not productive things. But they're doing it, but, but, the, but they're doing it on those other platforms. Here's the thing. The, the guy or woman who trolls on Twitter, they're the same person who's on LinkedIn. Yeah. How many of you actually even go and look at the people that you follow on other platforms? 
you are going to be shocked. Some of these people are way in some other land. And, and I feel like to me, like it, it, what I, what I feel like though, is that LinkedIn is somewhat created a sterile bubble of where pandering is, is kind of easy to figure out. It's kind of like the LinkedIn algorithm is not rocket science. Text only posts, controversial top, like there, because there is, it's an echo chamber where there isn't that insight. I agree. Is it a safer place to post? But I think it's a difference between safe and calling people on bullshit, you know? And, and so for me, like, that's why, again, like, man, if you can't get active on LinkedIn where nobody is going to talk shit to you, like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, how is your, how do you have a thick skin to even be in sales? That would be my like take on it. But, but no, I, I do hear you, but I do think that what the problem with the, what's happened on it, it is it also doesn't create any discourse, like any, any like real, like if you look in the comments of most people's posts, there's no real dialogue going on. It's, I agree. It's my two cents. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no real dialogue and like, I'm okay with it. Trust me. I've been called a lot of stuff on LinkedIn, right? About like, this is wrong or whatever. And or call that on other platforms or other platforms. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Right. And, but that's okay. Like it's part of posting. Like I just, of course that's what's going to happen. So, so what do you think? What do you think about posting dissension on LinkedIn? I mean, I think it's great if it's, you know, work related. Like I would hate to see LinkedIn turn into Twitter from like a pro political perspective or some of the other really hot button issues in our society right now, because it is a place where, you know, your political affiliation, you can have intelligent conversations with people independent of some of the things that cause so much discourse in other areas. So, you know, I, I don't know, in some ways it's, I understand the people who are a little protective of like, don't go post, you know, your weekend plans every day. Don't go post your political affiliate. Like, you know, this isn't the place for this. This is a, like, this is a professional community. Um, so I think that in some ways that's good, but I also agree that I think, you know, it, it's also because so few people are posting, right? Like, it's like if only two or 3% of people are posting, well, you know, you, you probably have more like-minded people who are posting. So, you, you know, the likelihood that you point. get that discourse is just a lot lower, right? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a good point. Yeah, there's a lot of like the same posts, like or people posting over and over again. So you get that. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's like, how, how much, like how much Biden Trump, and I'm not, we're not going to get into it. <laughs> I mean, we can if you really want to. But my point is like, none like it's just it, it just it does kind of feel like linkedin at times though is kind of clueless like kind of just like completely so far off the pulse of reality like it's like it's like like we have some fake work reality like like linkedin is the is like this like work reality here let me see if there we go All right linkedin is like this work reality that's like no 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 nothing's happening nope nope nothing's happening we're just going to keep talking about the same stuff you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. You know, so anyway, we don't have to like belabor the point, but I do feel like we need to realize like this stuff is actually happening. Like you know, just because you're at work doesn't mean that there's not, you know, a Black Lives, you know, Austin uh, on the street down here. Right. And that these things aren't like still important. But I feel like so many people, but you know, are nervous about that. But then they are those other people on the other platforms. That's just what I don't get. I think if you go follow me across platforms, I, you're going to just see, you'll see more barbecue on Instagram, you know, but you'll, you know, and maybe no, not that different on Twitter, but that's what I don't get is that people, I feel like LinkedIn in particular is like, they act different. I don't know. Well, I mean, honestly, that probably comes back to having a LinkedIn strategy, right? I think that, you know, it's okay to post those things every once in a while, as long as you understand what your strategy is, what your objectives are, and, and you know, hey, I'm posting to this audience. Uh, these are the things that I'm posting on a regular basis. And then, yeah, infuse a little personality every once in a while. But like, it's easy to lose sight, right? Like, I don't necessarily have an, a strategy for my Instagram, right? So I can just post kind of whatever, right? But if you are using LinkedIn intentionally, you probably shouldn't be posting about politics today and food tomorrow and, you know, the weather. Like, again, infuse personality, but recognize that, hey, I am trying, I'm here, I'm showing up for a reason and to achieve business outcomes. And, you know, honestly, like, politics have never had a huge place in business, right? You don't want to, you don't ask in your first interview what political affiliation you have. And it's pretty inappropriate to ask employees who they vote like, right? So recognizing 
this is like a workplace platform and I have a goal here that I'm trying to achieve. I should infuse personality, but I shouldn't be like dominating my content production, right? Yeah, no, I, I get that. I, just to me, it's like, but you can't, if you're not the same person in every facet of your life, you're never going to achieve the reputation that you want. If you if you are one of those people who's like, I've cultivated some fake ass work reputation, but in reality, I'm this other person. You will get exposed. Like it will happen. Like over time, like you will get found out. And so my point is just, you know, just think about that when you're building your reputation. Yeah. You know, like just people can go search you on other platforms. Right. Like by Google, your name, uh, not just your LinkedIn will come up. Also, your Instagram and Twitter will come up. <laughs> I think some people don't quite realize that or don't quite don't quite fully appreciate that. So, all right. So we've got just a few minutes left here. Let's let's go back. We'll bring it full circle. I went on a tangent. I'll, I'll take the blame for that, because, again, it, it just is more of like a pet peeve of mine that like, you know, I was on a, I'm, I'm doing a, a conference or a, a webinar on Thursday with somebody. And we did the prep call last week. And the very first thing, oh yeah, you commented that thing on my post. Like I said something negative, you know? And it's like, yeah, I did. And it's like, it, it, it doesn't, I like you, you're great. You're a wonderful person. I just didn't agree with that one thing. That's okay. You know, but again, on LinkedIn, I feel like it's like, who is this person? This person commented negatively on my post. Oh my God. Like, who are you to dare speak up? Come on, man. Let's just let's just toughen up a little bit, people. You shouldn't like that's my that's my point is you should not be posting actively if you can't take a little heat. You know, take a little heat. So anyway, back to it, full circle. Okay. That's probably why everyone's scared to post because Jake's gonna come. Uh, I never post. comment. <laughs> that's the whole my whole point is I almost never comment on people's posts and I only do and I'm like, hey, here's a different viewpoint versus like this is stupid, right? So all right, let's bring it full circle. So if you are an individual, okay, you're a team. Okay, I'll give my top two tips for 2021. Okay, we're going to be doing a lot of this, just so you guys know. We're going to be doing a lot of this type of content over the course of the rest of this month in December about trends we're seeing in LinkedIn. Mackenzie's going to be putting out a lot of her own content around trends around LinkedIn, uh, what teams are doing. You know, again, we're always trying to share very tactical best practices. Um, so I'll tell you some of the, what I think are the most important strategies to have, all right, as a team. The first and something we haven't talked about yet is adding people. That if you look at the average person on LinkedIn, they don't have very many followers. And not only that, most of their followers are ex coworkers and current coworkers. So step one is you have to start to, again, just think, let's, let's, let's play with this networking event or business. It's like you're going to a networking event. It's your first one. And you need to start collecting business cards. That's what your connections are. So again, on LinkedIn Sales Navigator, I can connect with 82 people in 12 minutes. Okay, I've, very, I've said this 8,000 times. But I would, again, if my, even if my boss wasn't investing in it, I would invest in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. I would have no problem paying $70 out of my pocket because there's so many things that I could do to manage the network. So that's one. I want all of you to look at your follower account and I want you to make a commitment. I'm going to grow my network within my buyer circle. Okay. That's one. I'll let I'll let Mackenzie talk about posting and, and engagement. I think she's done a great job there. Um, is DM strategy that right now the DM on LinkedIn is one of the most underutilized resources. Now, look, some people will tell you, "Oh my gosh, I get so much whatever," but I'm also telling you, compared to what they get in email, it's not even close. And the number one way is voicemail, right? If you're a first degree connection, I can send you a voicemail. Right, I love the voicemail. Hey, John, I saw this thing. Quick note, okay. The other thing, video. You can literally hit. There's a plus button, and there's a video. You can send a personalized one-to-one -one video to somebody. So my my ask is creativity. So add people, and just instead of doing the same old, same old, get more creative. And if you want, do me a favor, Shelby. I know you're on, Shelby. Uh, we're doing a webinar on Thursday with. CEO Sendoso and Beck from Flip That Funnel on creativity. So we'll drop the link, sign up for it on Thursday. Um, the other thing is on Wednesday, if you're in enterprise sales, we're doing a quarterly earnings call breakdown. So if you're in enterprise sales and you're like, how do I get my foot in the door? I'm going to talk about LinkedIn strategies there. But again, I feel like 2020, 2021 has to be about creativity. So enterprise sales, tune in Wednesday creativity tune in Thursday. I think both of those um, 
Yes, Leon, you're correct. I do not personalize connection requests. If your profile is good enough, you don't need to. If, you're, if your tagline is good enough, if, if your tagline says business development representative and you've got a picture that's cut off with you around your boy's arm at a wedding, you're not going to get too many people to accept. But if instead it's I work with leading CEOs to do X, boom, right? And I've got a professional uh, like looking but fun headshot, that's how you're going to get more people. I'm telling you, people just changing their picture and their headline, connection rates double, triple, quadruple. So Leon, that help, helps to answer that. So those are my two trends. Add people to grow your network and be creative when you reach out. Mackenzie, take us home. What are your top trends that every sales team go the rest of this year, 2020, needs to adhere to? I think that the first thing is, you know, going back to what we talked about at the beginning, when you get asked a question from a prospect on a phone call that you're reaching out about, go answer that question in a story or a post. One Easy. One. You've just answered the same question. You can go answer that question 8,000 times for 8,000 people, or you can go post about it and reach 8,000 people and, you know, feature it on your profile and get every person who you reach out to, to be able to have the answer to that question or your top questions that you get asked or objections that you get asked, right? Like put that front and center, like help people, people, buyers want to be able to research products before like before they engage with salespeople, people don't want to hang out with salespeople if they don't understand what they're selling or the value that it adds to them, right? So let people self-service that information if they want to. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, it's not, and Jake, you said, go connect with your buyers. And I just want to call out that, yes, you should be going and connecting with your prospects, people that are in your ICP. That doesn't mean you need 100,000 followers. It means that you need, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 followers that are exactly the people that you are talking to when you post content on the platform. It's not about having like the most connections. It's about being intentional and creating a community of people who you want to talk to every single day. Um, so I think that there's a ton of opportunities to be using the platform more strategically. Um, and, you know, we see great results when we uh, watch teams start doing that. There you go. The one-to-one. -one. I expect to see a lot of one-to-one. -one. Again, I think the safest way is put it in the comments if you don't feel comfortable, you know, or say, wow, this is a really interesting insight, Susan. You know, is it okay if I share this with my network? And I think you'll actually be shocked by how many people will say like yes to that. So thank you, Mackenzie. We had some we had some difficulties. We worked through it. We had audio difficulties. Then the internet went out. We had to use a hotspot, but it worked. I can't believe the hotspot held. That never happens ever, right? So again, for everybody, um, you know, looking at this now, it, again, LinkedIn is, you know, is going to continue to be a powerhouse when it comes to sales for the next two to three years. And so, you know, again, make sure you go follow McKinsey. Shelby, can we make sure to drop McKinsey's link in here as well too, just so we make sure everyone starts following McKinsey too. Um, she promised me she's going to be putting out at least a post a day starting this week? Is it this week? I said December, but uh, I mean, All right, I already December. Put content on, you know, a December. Basis. All right. And then do me a favor, Shelby, do you have the link for the Zoom on Wednesday? So go ahead again. If you're interested in creativity, sign up for that sales hacker one. And then if you're interested in enterprise sales, we'll drop the, the Zoom for that too. Um, I think it's going to be a great, a great session. So that, my friends, um, is our Monday LinkedIn Live. Jake and friends, McKinsey, thank you very much. Yeah. We did it live. We made it work. Everyone have a great, amazing rest of your week. And make sure again, sign up. We've got some really cool stuff planned this week. Follow McKenzie. And we will see you all on Friday for the recap. Have a great week, everybody.